What we're going to have a look at now is how to calculate the net present value, or the NPV, and the internal rate of return, or the IRR, in Excel. So if we have a look at this workbook, the NPV example workbook, we've got two worksheets over here. One that has cash flows on an annual basis and one that has cash flows on a semi-annual basis. So we can see the difference between how we'd calculate NPV and IRR if the cash flows are either annually or semi-annually in our model. All right. So what we've got here is some dates. And if we have a look at all these dates, our initial cash flow, which is typically an investment in a project, so let's say this is an investment of 50 million US dollars, and that happens on the 31st of December 2017, and then our cash inflows happen annually in December 2018, 2019, 2020, etc. thereafter, and they end in 2026. So there are a couple of ways that we can calculate NPV or net present value. Let's have a look at how we would actually do it from first principles, remembering the net present value formula that we had a look at in the slides. What we always need when we are calculating a net present value is the discount rate. And the discount rate is typically the cost of capital, the weighted average cost of capital, or it's the cost of equity in a project, whatever the case might be, depending on whether we are buying debt or equity in a project. So we want to calculate what is the net present value of this project, so we're going to use a discount rate of 10%. We'll say that is the company, that is our cost of capital. If we're going to invest the $50 million, the cost of that $50 million to us is, is 10% per annum. So that's our discount rate. Okay. So what I've done over here is I've taken the numbers and I've simply done 1 plus R. And all that is, is it's simply 1 plus that discount rate. So we're just converting discount rate into a numeric format over there. You can see that gives us 1.10. So how we calculate our net present value over here. So we want to calculate our net present value as at the 31st of December 2017. So remember that we don't need to discount this 50 million because it happens on the 31st of December 2017. So 50 million on the 31st of December 2017 is equal to or is worth 50 million on the 31st of December 2017. However, the cash flows that happen thereafter do need to be discounted to today or to that date. So that's what we are trying to do over here. If we calculate the net present value and we go equals over here to start our Excel formula, we might just want to add the negative 50 that happened today. So we might want to add the negative 50 that happens today and we don't need to discount it at all. However, we do need to discount our future cash flows what we do is we actually are going to calculate the net present value of the future cash flows in the next cell. So we're going to go plus D8, but we're going to actually discount that to today. So we're going to say, you know what, that what we're going to put in D8 is the net present value of all of the cash flows as at the 31st of December 2018. We want to discount that today. And how do we discount it to today? We divide it by 1 plus R, which we've got over there just above us in C7. Remember, we take the cash flow divided by 1 plus R, and that discounts it to today. So that is our net present value. And we can see as we haven't done any of the other calculations, it's just negative 50. What we can do is copy that formula to the right. And what it's doing at each point in time is taking the cash flow that happens at that date, plus the cash flows at the future date, and discounting it to today. So if we go all the way to the right, we'll see what's happening. So at that point in time, there are no future cash flows over here in M8. So it's discounting by 1 plus R, but there's nothing to discount. So it's to zero and it's taking seven. So that seven is the seven million US dollars that happens at the 31st of December 2026. And our result is just seven. Over here, what it's doing is it's taking the seven that happens a year from then. So a year from the 31st of December 2025, one year later is the seven and discounting it by 1 plus R. And in fact, if we go and have a look at what this formula is doing by evaluating formulas, it's taking K3, which is our cash flow today 9, but it's then discounting 7 by 1 plus R, so it's dividing 7 by 1.1, and that means that 7 in one year's time from in 2026, if we discount it to 2025, is actually worth 6.36 million. And when we sum that up, we get to roughly 15. Obviously, this is we are rounding over here because we are not looking at the numbers with any decimal places. So if I had to look at it with decimal places, you can see it's actually 15.36. So 15.36 is the 7 discounted to 2025 plus the 9 that happens at that point in time. Now we go to 2024. 
well, what do we want to do? We want to take the future cash flows, which we know as that the 31st of December 2025 is worth 15. We want to discount that to 2024 by dividing by 1.1 plus the cash flows that happened 2024, the 10. We get to 24. Go one period previously. We want to say, well, hang on a second. 24 is all the future cash flows discounted to 2024. We need to discount that one more period to 2023 plus the cash flow that happens in 2023, the 9, cell I3. And so on. And we eventually arrive at a net present value for this project or for this company, for this investment of 13.07 million US dollars. Now in Excel, there actually is a net present value formula. And the net present value formula takes all the future cash flows from 2018 to 2026 and discounts them to today. The first thing that we need to give the net present value formula is a rate. So we're going to give it a rate of 10%. That is our discount rate. So we put 10% comma, and then we can just put all of our cash flows. And if I press enter, that is simply the value of all of those cash flows today. However, we need to add in our initial cash flow of negative 50, and we didn't need to include the negative 50 in the discount formula, the near present value formula, because we don't need to discount it. So we can just add it at the end, and we can see we arrive at the same answer, 13.07 million. Now, the net present value formula, the NPV formula, assumes that all of these cash flows happen on an annual basis, which in fact they do over here. However, cash flows might not always happen on an annual basis. They might have certain dates attached to them, and that's where the X NPV formula is useful. So over here, we're going to calculate the net present value using the X NPV formula. And as we can see, Excel tells us that this returns the net present value for a schedule of cash flows. When we use the X NPV formula, we actually can include our initial cash flow. We do, however, first need to give it the discount rate. So the discount rate, always very important when calculating the net present value, because that is the rate at which it discounts future cash flows. So we give it the rate, comma, give it all of the values, including the value of the first cash flow that happens at the date that we are discounting all the future cash flows to. And we give it all the dates. So XMPV asks for the dates as an input as well. And when we press enter, we can see it's giving a very similar answer slightly less and XMPV is actually slightly more accurate. It takes into account all of the dates and probably why it's slightly less is because, you know, maybe there's a leap year in here. So then in that leap year, the cash flows are actually discounted slightly more than in a year when they're just 365 days. So the XMPV formula is actually very accurate. All right, let's go on to internal rate of return. So IRR, like NPV, there's an IRR formula in Excel which returns the internal rate of return for a series of cash flows. And for IRR, we need to give it all of our cash flows, including our initial negative. So IRR needs a negative cash flow to start off with in order to compute. And when we press enter, we can see our IRR is 16.85%. Like NPV, there's an XIRR function. And the XIRR is slightly more accurate because we can link it to exact dates that the cash flows occur at. The IRR just assumes that cash flows happen on an annual basis. So for XRR, we can give it the values. And we also need to give it the dates. We can see an optional input is the guess. And that can reduce the time of calculation for the XIRR formula. If we know that the IRR is roughly 10%, we can put 10% there. And then instead of starting where it starts for the iteration, it'll start at 10% when it calculates the XIRR. But I've never seen that used in a financial model. So you can press enter, we can see it's pretty quick without even using the guess. And the XRR, just like the XMPV, is slightly less than the IRR and NPV formula. Why? Because again, it is more accurate and perhaps there are leap years over here and it's taking that into account. And that's what the XRR formula returns to us. So we can see here that NPV from first principles, 13.07 million US dollars. NPV for using NPV gives us the same result. XMPV, very similar, but slightly more accurate. IRR and XIRR, again, very similar, but the XIRR is slightly more accurate. Let's have a look at what happens when our cash flows occur on a semi-annual basis. So if we have a look at our cash flows over here, the first cash flow, our cash outflow, our investment occurs on the 31st of December 2017. However, our cash inflows are occurring on a semi-annual basis, June, December, June, December, etc. So again, we can calculate our net present value from first principles over here. Now what we need to do is, if you remember the formula, the denominator of the NPV formula takes the 1 plus R calculation to the power of T. Now T 
on an annual basis is 1, which is why we could just divide by 1 plus r. But on a semi-annual basis, t is actually 0 0.5. So what we need to do over here is the exact same formula, taking the cash flow that happens at that point in time, plus the cash flow that happens one year in the future divided by 1 plus r, but we need to divide by 1 plus r to the power of 0 0.5, which is our t, our time value, because our cash flows happen on a 0 0.5 annual basis, so they happen every half year. So what we can do over here is we take our initial cash flow plus the value of all the future cash flows discounted to 30th of June 2018 divided by 1 plus r, which is over there, to the power of 0 0.5. And when we drag that to the right, we can see we get an NPV of 10. And I'll add some decimal places so you can see it's actually $9.62 million. When we use the NPV formula, what we need to do is we actually need to divide the rate by 2. Roughly, the rate divided by 2 is our semi-annual rate. And that's, again, roughly is a slightly more accurate way of doing it, which we will get to later in the course. We can take all of our future values and add in our value that happens on the 31st of December 2017. And you can see that it's not exactly the same but we're getting roughly the same answer. Our XNPV formula, as we know, will give us the most accurate answer. So we give it the annual rate, 10%. We give it all of our values, including the initial value of negative 50, and we give it our dates. And it tells us that the XNPV, or the net present value, is 9.63 million US dollars. And we can see that the NPV from first principles was actually closest, but this is the most accurate NPV. IRR, we can't use the IRR formula. IRR does assume that cash flows happen on an annual basis. XIRR will allow us to evaluate all of the values and the dates. And tells us that the IRR is 17.86%. That is how we calculate net present value and internal rate of returns for both annual and semi-annual cash flows. And what we've done here on the semi-annual sheet can be extrapolated to quarterly cash flows or monthly cash flows. Remembering that your T on a quarterly cash flow basis will be 0 0.25 and your T on a monthly basis will be 1 over 12.